Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are checking out the WB Sim Cessna 172. Now my previous favorite five uh, video I misspoke by the way guys this is a payware aircraft that's available on just flight and i do want to apologize for misspeaking on that it is not a freeware the cessna 152 is freeware the 172 is not and it does require the deluxe version of microsoft flight simulator anyways so today we are going to be checking out the latest release of the wb sim 172 as well as using the flightsim.com cls 60 force feedback yoke with the default profile that is designed specifically around once again the 172 so stick around if you are interested in acquiring any of my overkills tutorial guides for microsoft flight simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel please consider joining us on patreon patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road patreon link can be found in the description below All right, so jumping into the cockpit, let's go ahead and we're just going to do a auto start because I feel like cheating today. We're also using the Flight Sim Factory, no, Gear Falcon, <laughs> uh, TPA or TPM, TPM throttle box. So if you guys haven't checked them out, make sure you check them out as well. We also have a new kit coming from Authenticit we're going to be showcasing very soon. So stick around for that as well. Let's get Beam going. Beam Eye Tracker, fabulous head tracker. Uses nothing more than a webcam up on top of my monitor here. 30 US dollars, link to it down in the description below. Works absolutely fabulous. You guys are gonna see it in action here in just about two seconds. There we go. Let's center that. Let me get that off my screen. We do wanna check the curves for a second. Let's increase that left curve just a little bit. Mappings on the yaw. There we go. And let's grab this guy and bring it up. There we go. I need to be able to see that 45 degree angle, right? We're going to be doing some uh, touch and goes here at Tucson International Airport. As I have stated, this year is the year I am going to be going for my pilot's license. So wish me luck on that. It is finally going to happen. I am getting myself brushed up on a few things, starting to do some basic stuff that I at least feel somewhat comfortable doing. We're going to set the altimeter here. There we go. Let's get the METAR information. So super excited about that. It's finally time. Let's see here. Winds 340-27 knots, so that means we're going to be departing from 1-1 left, if I'm not mistaken. Or actually, I guess, excuse me, now it's just runway 1-2. It's going to take a while to recognize that uh, the second runway was shut down. Which is funny, because it started as a taxiway, then became a runway, and now it's back to a taxiway. Okay, I'm hitting my enter button. Why is that not working? There, thank you. There go. There we go. What am I missing here? It's my autopilot panel. Squawking VFR. The altimeter is already set. Can't remember how to change this one from HPA to uh, inches. I don't remember how to do that. I don't remember. All right, so we'll just leave it as is, because I do not remember. We're not gonna be using the autopilot today anyway. We're just gonna fly it. And let's see if I can remember anything of what I'm doing here that taxi light turned on all 
One of my goals before getting my pies license was to lose some weight. I've lost 51 pounds since the first of the year, so... Yay! It is time. Which one did I say we're departing from? 340... Wind's coming from 340... No, that's not right. Oh, there's the wind sock right there. Yeah, no, that's not right. We need to depart from 290 right. Two, oh, gosh. Three zero now. Three zero. Runway three zero. That's gonna it's gonna take forever for me to get that right. It has been one one left and one one right and two niner left and two niner right for twenty five years, if not longer. And now they went and screwed it all up because the magnetic handing changed. The WB Sim Cessna 172 with the deluxe version. Again, that is a requirement as well. Uh, is a fantastic rendition of the 172. Um, I have flown a 172 before. I have flown a 152 before. I have flown a uh, Katana before. Oh, that was years and years ago. And I will say that the uh, this version of the 172 is very, um, very accurate and, and with expectations set accordingly, right? It's still a simulator. It's still not built from the ground up, right? So it's. I would like to see a dedicated 172. I'd like to see someone like uh, SimWorks Studios or uh, Black Square. Black Square would be great as well. Something like that to, um, or help PMDG. I'd like to see you guys take care of the uh, uh, 172. That'd be nice. It'd be. It'd be nice to have a really good trainer. But this one definitely is very very nice. Uh, much much busier than the default 172. You're gonna find yourself making a lot more corrections. The yoke is far more busy. Uh, definitely a much busier aircraft. One of the things that I really enjoy about this guy here, uh, the force feedback, you guys, is completely different. It, it is a game-changing experience. You're actually going to watch my flying. It's going to be pretty crappy. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, that's part of why I'm doing this. Uh, the the behavior of it and just the overall getting used to force feedback, um, it, it there's just there's really no way to put it into words, but it completely changes the way you fly. It's going to change the way you react. Um, you, you, everything feels different than what you have been used to up to that point. If you've never used force feedback before, uh, so it's really, it's really challenging making the switch from um, non-force feedback to force feedback. This is a great model. Um, it's more or less plug and play. There's very limited uh, thing you have to do. You plug it in. You set your stop switch. Make sure it's turned off. That's this guy right here. Uh, it does have a stop switch on it in case it goes haywire. Um, just like anything motion s simulation does. Um, the trim is probably my favorite part about it, as silly as that sounds, because the trim, you have two options with the trim. You can either do a software trim where it trims inside the simulator, and then the, the yoke will react, or there's hardware trim, which is what I like to use, which actually physically moves, trims the yoke to your hand. And the reason why I prefer that is because I can put the back pressure or down pressure, whatever I'm using on it, and then trim to the feeling of where my hands are until the back pressure, for example, if we're in an incline, the back pressure is no longer there. So it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, it, it's really awesome. The, the yoke goes full forward. Um, we are as far in as we can go. Um, once the wheels touch down, um, which is authentic. So that part's pretty cool. I mean, it does a lot. It really is quite an amazing piece of equipment, guys. It, it's it's a game changer. And again, this is the CLS 60. I know they have a CLS 120, um, which I believe is just updated yoke. Uh, I want to say that that's for the Baron, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that. You have to check their website. But that's flightsim.com if you guys are interested. Uh, with flight, F-L-I-T-E. Um, and uh, this thing comes in at 800 US dollars. And before you guys like lose your minds over that, look at the competition before you trip. Because uh, they are way below their competition. The competition is far, far higher. So, and there actually isn't much for competition in the way of a force feedback yoke. Uh, force feedback flight sticks, that is definitely becoming a thing. Uh, we are in collaboration with Moza right now, so we'll be eventually getting their products. So that'll be fun. I've been in contact with them since before the expo. 
the expo was a ton of fun. Really had a great time getting to talk to everybody and, and hearing my name come up so, much, so many times, guys. From so many developers, you guys, there were multiple developers that said, uh, we just we hear your name over and over again. Have you talked to Overkill? Overkill Simulation showed me this, blah, blah, blah. That really meant a lot for those of you who were in attendance of the Flight Sim Expo 2024 and talking me up. That really, really was very heartwarming, and thank you very much for that support. I love all you guys. I really appreciate it. For example, me going for my pilot's license, that wouldn't even be remotely a thing if it was not for you guys. So thank you guys so much. And plus, just what I've learned. I learned so much from the community. I learned so much from you guys. I hope you guys know that. You know, I read most of your comments. I do my best to hit the comments. And uh, I, I learned just as much from you guys as hopefully you guys learn from me. Especially when it comes to real world operation, you know. So super excited for that gonna be a lot of fun i'm nervous too i'm not gonna lie the one thing that absolutely just scares the hell out of me i'm gonna tell you right now that i'm i'm nervous about is is practicing stalls i remember when i used to go up and do some stall practicing with my father i freaking hated them there's nothing natural about letting a plane fall out of the sky there's nothing normal about that um it's one thing to go into a dive it is another thing to literally let the plane fall from the air so that I'm a little nervous about. I'm hoping it'll be a little bit easier mentally, and that's all it is, the mental aspect. Um, being the person in control, I'm hoping that that will uh, be a little bit easier to handle, but I am very nervous about practicing the stalls. Everything else I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with. Even, even rough turbulence doesn't bother me anymore. It used to, but it doesn't anymore. Discovered that the last couple of flights. Hell, when we flew into Houston for the 2023 Expo, that was horrible. My poor daughter, it was her first time ever flying. We flew into a damn storm on top of the Houston heat. I probably should have checked that before I started taking the runway, but that's all right. Not doing the run-up today, and that, that's for you guys' benefit. Just to... Get up and fly the plane. All right. Here we go. Brakes on. Manifold pressure set. Airspeed alive. Yoke coming back. Come on. Rotate. Rotate, baby. Rotate. Rotated late on that, but that's all right. Trying to trim for 80 knots. You see with the force feedback yoke, especially with this version of the 172, we're much busier in the plane. Much busier. Going for a thousand feet is what I'm looking for. Just for pattern altitude. Come a little off heading. Like I said, I told you guys before we took off, my flying is significantly crappier. It really is. It's it's a big shift. Whoa, a little lag there. to level off yet. This version of the 172 is far more accurate. You get a far better feel of what the aircraft is doing. And again, obviously now you can actually feel it, which is nice. Uh, I, I'm going to be talking this thing up a lot, you guys. It really changed everything about the way I fly. And like I said, it made me crappier right now. Like I am not good at this at all anymore. Uh, it's it's definitely changed. All right, there's about a thousand feet. Trim out a little bit. Okay, 
Alright, trying to maintain right about 3600. Oh. Let's start a left hand circuit. Coordinated turns I need to work on. Not good at those either. It's really nerve wracking now because now I can feel the aircraft's bouncing around and changing pitch and so it's definitely like I said everything is a lot busier. A lot busier. Nope, 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 nope. And I'm climbing. I find myself pulling aft when making my turns now far more than I used to and I don't like that because obviously I'm thinking more like on the lines of pulling G's and pulling on a fighter and I don't like it because it's letting me know that I'm not keeping my turns coordinated I'm really trying to get better about watching my headings like right now I'm more or less at like a 20 degree offset from the runway where I should be 90 so I'm really not following Let's try this again. Nope, now we're descending. And correct me if I'm wrong, guys. This is where like, I absolutely take help, especially any real-world pilots who are watching this. Coordinated turn. If I'm making a left turn, I want right rudder to keep the nose level, right? Because I don't want the nose to sink into the turn. If, if I'm understanding this right now, it should be my reciprocal course so because if I put left rudder in then obviously that's gonna kick the tail up and the nose down so I'm trying to when I make my turns get that right rudder in there to keep the nose high and let the wings just bring it around and my understanding is that's how you want to maintain altitude so I feel like I'm right about where I need to be. I know the runway should be right about halfway through. Damn it. Descending again. It's nice that I can feel it now, though. Um, the runway should be right in the middle of that leg there on the wing. All right, let's trim that nose up. Let's trim the nose up. And what's our heading? We're still on a good heading, I feel. Come on. I know I'm looking for the 45 degree off the shoulder before I make my turn for base. This is such a fantastic version of the 172. It really is, guys. It's... I'm busy, my hands are clammy, like I'm nervous. This is a great one to practice with, is what I'm finding. Damn it, I'm descending again. Well, I'm about ready to slap myself in the face if I can't maintain altitude. You can feel engine RPMs in this, you can feel turbulence in this. Uh, the profile is completely customizable, everything from how quickly the trim hat reacts, like I reduced it quite a bit. All right, so we're going to trim for 60 knots. This is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to drop first flaps. Start trimming down. Almost time to turn for base. Okay. Damn it. Come on, baby. Stop climbing. I'm going to start that turn for about a 30 degree bank. Looking for about 500 feet descent. Still looking for my 60 knots. Pulling power off. Looking for that reciprocal course or that perpendicular. Whoa, 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 whoa. Descending like a rocket. Going for flaps too. Trimming for flaps. Trimming for flaps. Trimming for flaps. Remember as we drop flaps? Ah, damn it. 
Now I'm getting too low. As we drop flaps, the nose is going to want to climb up again. Let's put some power back in. I think I, that, dis, that descent nose down at 1,000 feet per minute was a bit much and shot me up a little bit. Come on. Damn. Alright, let's turn. Damn, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Turn final. Whoa, 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 whoa. Getting slow, getting slow, getting slow, getting slow, getting a lot of slow, getting a lot of slow. Let's put that power back in. That was my bad. And now I am very low. As I feel like I am. And we're going to go full flaps as we come around final. Eyes on my target. Landing zone is where I'm going. Going strictly visual. I'm keeping my eyes up. I'm trying to maintain something that at least resembles center line. Cross the threshold. Bad. Flaps up. Back to full power. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Maintain that center line. 60 knots. Come on. That's all right. Up, up we go, up we go. Watching that runway heading. Climbing for 80 knots. Thousand feet again. Those down? No. Okay, good. Let's try this one more time. Start trimming up. And going for a perpendicular. I feel like that's a little better on the turn. And 
That should be about our 90 degree there. Towards Black Mountain. That feels like a little bit better position. Now we're going to go for the reciprocal Come on the downwind. Doing a little better of maintaining altitude this time, which is nice. Not quite as all over the place as I was, right? He says as he starts to climb. Let's come down a little bit. Let's get wings level. Start coming down for 80 knots. A little high in the pattern. I feel like I could have extended out maybe a little bit further. Oh. When you start really trying to practice this stuff and really start diving it in deep, it can get pretty nerve-wracking. And this thing really adds, it's, it's a lot of immersion and a lot of stress. Like it really does add that much. Nope, 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 nope. Not ready to descend. Like I'm a little better there. A little better for the base turn at least. Actually, if anything, I'm wondering. Actually, that doesn't make sense. I actually think I'm a little too far from the airport. Which is okay, because I need all the time I can get. It's probably why my descent came in so shallow, too. Alright. Um, yeah, it's a little early yet. Be easy. I'm pretty good at maintaining heading. I'm a little off from where I started. All right, I think we're good enough to start our base turn. Nope, no, no, no. I definitely don't want you climbing. Get down. Just start. Come on. Come on. Keep going. For 500 feet per minute. There's that perpendicular. Flaps one. Trimming down. Power off. Watching that, watching that descent. Damn. Get your nose down, sir. Alright. 
start that final again. Turn, baby. Gosh, you are just all over the place right now. Whoa, no, 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 no. What is that? Go flaps too. Nope. Nose down. A little long in the pattern again. At least I feel like I am. Got our 60 knots though. Let's add some power in. I'm still, yeah, I'm long. I'm descending too fast. That's why I'm doing everything long. I think if I'd cut my descent rate down to like 250 feet, wow, we're getting choppy. Full flaps. I think if I did cut my descent rate down to like 250, I would have been good. Damn, come on. Come on. And it really is. It's windy as crap outside right now. No, oh, I'm too low. Just hold it. Hold it up. 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 Settle down. Settle down. Let's get something that even remotely looks like center line. I think we'll do a full stop on this one. Uh very shallow approach. Very shallow. Not the way I wanted that to go. And we're going to come in early. Hold it. Oof. A little squeakage at the end there. We can exit right here at 1-3. Alright, we've cleared the runway. Flaps up. Strobe's off. Landing lights off. So, that is the WB Sim Cessna 172. Now, guys, all of your gauges and everything like that work absolutely perfect. Uh, they've added a bunch of fixes in this latest release to basically features anything from the Garmin to some of the avionics. Um, but the biggest thing about it that makes it so much different, again, is the flight model adjustments that they've made in previous releases. It is absolutely a fantastic... Um, rendition of the Cessna 172 and I mean you guys saw the action here the beautiful part is even if you don't own a force feedback is you got to see what the plane was doing inside the sim so you got to see it in action you got to see how busy my hands were you got to see how much different it was in comparison to flying the default model where you spend most of your time pretty stationary right um, and then with all the turbulence effects and everything like that do that do come with this these are an absolute beautiful combination now they have a full Cessna 172 uh, cockpit that eventually I am going to get uh, for my training uh, but it's uh, it's pretty pricey so I have to get to that point um, so anyways guys I really hope you guys enjoyed the video again this aircraft uh, edition can be found on Just Flight's website make sure that you guys check it out make sure that you guys at least take a peek at the flightsim.com's CLS 60 force feedback yoke especially if you are like myself and you are interested in possibly using Microsoft Flight Simulator or any other simulator as a training platform as always folks I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stay safe and healthy I'll see you in the next one folks bye bye